In this video, I'll be giving you the demo of obturation, but before obturation, we need to irrigate it thoroughly. Clean the files, you will use sodium hypochlorite, preferably 2.5%. 2 ml of exchange of irrigants is necessary between each file. That is, supposingly if you are going from 15 to 20 K file, you at least need 2 ml of irrigation. So, you can use sodium hypochlorite in between, between your biomechanical preparation. You can flush the sodium hypochlorite with normal saline. Normal saline does not have any antimicrobial efficacy and is only used for lubrication and to flush out the other irrigants and to make the canal wet because we are doing biomechanical preparation in wet canals only. Sodium hypochlorite has pulp dissolving, tissue dissolving ability as well as it removes the organic portion of the smear layer. Using sodium hypochlorite followed which you can rinse the sodium hypochlorite with your normal saline. After that we can use 17% EDTA as your irrigation to remove the organic portion of the smear layer. Followed by that we can use normal saline to rinse out the EDTA after which we'll use chlorhexidine gluconate as the final rinse because it has a property of substantivity and substantivity is the property that can maintain your antimicrobial efficacy within the root canal for a prolonged period of time. So this will be the final protocol of irrigation following which if you are doing a single sitting RCT you can directly use your sealer and then obturate it but if you are doing the rct in multiple sittings then you need the intracanal medicament which can be your calcium hydroxide so calcium hydroxide is the most commonly used intracanal medicament and you can mix this with either distilled water saline or even with chlorhexidine calcium hydroxide mixed with chlorhexidine will increase the antimicrobial activity efficacy and is also known as synergistic effect other than calcium hydroxide you can even use 2% chlorhexidine gel other medicaments can be your leather mix which is corticosteroid and is used only in resorption cases as well as trauma cases other than that, we can also use combination of antibiotics that is triple antibiotic paste or double antibiotic paste as intracanal medicament. Triple antibiotic paste contains minocycline, metronidazole and ciprofloxacin but minocycline causes to discoloration. So a double antibiotic paste was invented in which the minocycline was removed and, you, uh, and it is a mixture of ciprofloxacin as well as metronidazole. So after irrigation and before obturation, we need to dry the canals for which we'll use absorbent paper points. So as my master pickle file was 45, so I'll be using 45 number of the paper point to dry the canal. So here in this case, I've already done the final irrigation as well as dried the canal and I'll be starting with the obturation. So what is obturation? Obturation is a method which is used to fill and seal a cleaned and shaped root canal. Having a root canal, using a root canal sealer as well as the core filling material, which is the core filling material is mostly our gutta paka cone. Next, the question comes that when do we need to obturate? When is the right time to obturate? So for vital cases, you can do in a single sitting, whereas in non-vital cases or necrotic cases, extra care and attention is necessary. And if it's a weeping canal, then you need to do it in multiple sittings and you need to give the intracanal medication. So where are we not going to perform a single sitting RCT? So if a patient is having supposedly TMJ disorder or the patient's mouth opening is difficult, there's calcification, ledges or their canal obstruction, if it's a hot tooth and even if it's a retreatment case. So in retreatment, the intracanal medicaments play a very important role hence multiple sittings should be done followed by if there's anatomical variations as well as if the patient is non-cooperative and very importantly if it's an asymptomatic non-vital tooth with periapical pathology then we'll try to do it in multiple sittings and not in a single sitting. Now till where we need to obturate we need to obturate completely till our working length and our working length was till the 
minor diameter from the coronal reference point to the minor diameter. Similarly, we have to obturate from the coronal reference point to the minor diameter. Now for obturation, we require some sealer as well as a gutta pucka cones. So here I am having from 15 to 40 as well as from 45 to 80 number of GP. And besides a gutta pucka cone, as a gutta pucka does not stick to the canal wall, so it needs some medium. And also we require a three dimensional obturation so that there is no percolation. For that we need to coat the canal with the sealers. So here I am having this endomethazone sealer which I will be showing you in this demo. This is a zinc oxide eugenol sealer. Whereas the second sealer that I am having is AH+. This is epoxy based sealer. Epoxy based resin sealers. Other than these, very commonly now calcium silicate based sealers are used which are tricalcium silicate in which the main component is MTA. Other than that, we also have calcium hydroxide based sealers. The benefit of calcium hydroxide based sealer is that it is antimicrobial, osteogenic, cementogenic potential. Other sealers are silicon sealers such as Rico Seal and Gutta Flow. Besides than that, we also have GIC sealers. The benefit of GIC sealer is that GIC has a dentine bonding ability. Other than that, we have resin sealers such as Endoraz and Diaket, which bond to both the canal as well as the resin core very well and give you a monoblock effect. So they are known to be good sealers. In this video, I'll be using this endomethazone sealer, which is a zinc oxide based sealer and is the most commonly used sealer. Zinc oxide eugenol has been used very commonly for obturation. So here I'm going to dispense these, uh, the sealer, the powder as well as the liquid onto the glass slab. So here I have dispensed the powder as well as liquid of endomethazone sealer. But before mixing that, we are going to select our master apical gutta pucka cone. Our master apical file was 45 number K file and the working length was 20.5. So firstly, I will be taking my 45 number GP cone and putting it to 20.5 mm onto the tooth and verify it with a radiograph. So here I have taken 45 number GP and I am going to mark the working length such as in this case it is 20.5. So I am putting onto the slot of 20.5 and now bending it. And now I will be placing this GP into the tooth. And yes, I am getting a tug back. Tug back is a feeling of resistance when this master cone goes to the working length. So you should get some resistance which is known as tug back. Now we'll be taking the x-ray for this. This is the radiograph of master apical gutta pucka cone which is 45 number which is showing that yes, the gutta pucka cone has reached till the apex and is not out. And also we have achieved the tug pack. So now we'll be starting with the obturation. Now we are going to mix the sealer. So here we have mixed our endomethazone sealer. And now we have to coat the sealer onto the tooth. How we we'll coat it? We'll either coat it with an instrument known as lenturospiral or either we can do it with our master apical gutta pucka cone itself. So in this case, I am to I am going to use my master apical gutta pucka cone to coat the canal with the sealer. So here I am coating the sealer on the master apical gutta pucka cone so as to coat the canal wall. We need to coat the canal wall thoroughly. Either with lenturospiral or with your master apical gutta pucka cone. Now we have coated the root canal wall with the sealer. 
Now after that we will use our accessory katapaka cones but how we will select that which cone now we have to use. For that we will use spreader. So I have 15 number, 20 number, 25, 30, 35, 40. Now we have to select the number of stopper that goes to 1 to 2 mm short of the working length. As our working length here is 20.5, I'll select the spreader that will go to at least 18.5 or 19.5. So in this case, I have used that my 25 number stopper is actually going till 19 mm and the 30 number stopper is stopping way behind. So I'll be using my 25 number as it is going close to the working length, which is at least 1 to 2 mm from the working length. So I'll be coating this spreader with my sealer and going into the canal. So here I've coated my 25 number spreader with the sealer and I'm going into the canal length and marking the end where it is going. So I have marked it with a stopper and this is to the length going to the length 19 mm. So similarly I'll take my 25 number of the GP as the auxiliary cones as the accessory cones to fill the canal now. So here I'm using my 25 number of the GP cone and now I'll be going till 19 mm as we have marked. We can coat these accessory cones and now I'll be putting it into the space which was created by the spreader like this. Here you can see it is going inside. Similarly, we are going to repeat this process till the coronal third is filled. This is known as lateral condensation technique. Again, you are going to take the spreader, coat the spreader with the sealer and again make space for the accessory cones, for the auxiliary cones. So now we'll see till what point this stopper is going. We'll mark the length. Similarly, we'll take 25 number GP accessory cone and place it into the canal. Now this is going till 17 mm, this 25 number spreader. So now we'll take our 25 number of the cone, coating it with the sealer and now putting it into the space that was created by the spreader. Now we'll repeat this process till the coronal third is filled. Now if a cone goes inside and the apical end gets bent like this, then you need to discard it. We will not use it. We will discard it. I have filled some 25 number cones. Now I am using the 20 number spreader, coating the sealer and now going inside the canal making some space for the accessory cones till where it can go and now after making space similarly for 20 we will take a 20 number GP and now coat it with the sealer and now place it in the canal like this. Similarly, you will repeat the process. So now when it's not going beyond the length of the crown, that means that a canal is fully packed and now we will expose a radiograph to see how the canal is condensed. So this is the radiograph after lateral condensation. Here we can see packing. There are no voids. Hence now we have achieved our obturation. Now we'll heat our instrument such as ball burnisher over a flame. You can use either spirit lamp or even you can use a blowtorch. Many other instruments such as electric GP cutter also come where you do not need to heat. So here once our ball burnisher is heated, we can sear off the extra GPs from the orifice. Now we have seared off the excess GPs and we can remove some of the gutta from the pulp chamber so that we can achieve a good 
obturation as well as there will be space for some restoration heating it again to sear off more gp from the coronal part now here i have seared off the gps from the orifice from the pulp chamber and now you can see that the orifice is now completely condensed with the gutta perka now here we are having ample space for a post endodontic restoration now here also we can expose an x ray this is the radiograph after removing the coronal gp following which you should obturate as soon as possible whatever post endodontic restoration is advised such as composite restoration followed by crown or just the composite restoration or post and cold we should give the post endodontic restoration as soon as possible so that there is no percolation of fluids from the oral cavity to the root canal and hence the success the prognosis of our treatment would be improved